What is up, YouTube? We're back with another daily thought. Today we are going without the mic um, because yesterday I sounded like Ultron and uh, and Hen intern Henry's words, and I'm not sure how to fix that. This stupid cord. I don't know where it is. I got this little connector thing, and every time I thought I was unplugging it, I thought I was just being a meathead and unplugging it. Um, and turns out I wasn't being a meathead for the first time and I just don't know how to work technology or I got a faulty cord So I'm working on that process um, And figuring that out just got done showering. We were climbing today had a little upper body sesh today I'm thinking about trying to film some of my lifts and like put them into these daily thoughts or like do some of my daily thoughts while I'm lifting and kind of seeing how that looks and how that works out, but we'll kind of Kind of do that on the fly. We'll see how that kind of works, but uh, we're still back in the basements um, I kind of like this whole setup. One of the things I realized with YouTube, and I was kind of talking to my group this morning about this, was I don't dread making content for YouTube, which is kind of cool. Like it's 9.30 right now, I gotta go to bed. Um, I got a 6 a.m. session tomorrow. I gotta read, journal, and everything like that before bed. And if I had to make an Instagram piece right now, especially on the main page, I think I would really dread it. Um, I would have anxiety over it. I would really try hard to put out a good piece. And I think there's a lot of that goes into like, having a big audience and then feeling like you have to continually keep up with the, the content piece and trying to find a better ways to get your voice out there. Whereas I feel like YouTube just quick, like I can just voice my thoughts here. And obviously there's ways to touch up these YouTube videos that I'm not doing, but I don't dread making these videos. I actually kind of look forward to it. And that is a sign to me that there's something here. I'm not sure what it is yet, but there's something here for me to expand upon. When I enjoy making my content on Instagram, every single time that stuff blows up, every single time. Um, and I'm enjoying making this content here, which is kind of cool. I um, wanted to read a little quote from the Iliad today. Um, intern Lockin recommended this book to me. He quoted it for a long time. It took a while to get into it. I've actually had to watch a couple of videos on the book. I think that's an important piece when you're reading books, especially old books. Watch a YouTube video on the background of the book. It'll help you contextualize your knowledge. I don't think you have to read all the intros of a book itself. Like this book had 97 pages of just a different author talking about this author. I don't really like that. Like when I want to open up a book, this is weird, but when I open up a book, I'll read the author that I wanted to read, not just some dude that translated it all. But um, that's kind of weird on my part, but I'll watch a YouTube video breaking down this book and that actually really helps. But um, the quote that it was, it was, no man, will hurl, no man will hurl me down to death against my fate and fate, no one has ever escaped it. And I really like that quote. And one of the things, oh, now we're breaking the light. We can't lose the light. Look at the lighting. Oh my God, it looks so much better. Yeah, we got the influencer. My computer just died here. We're gonna set that up. But that was kind of super anticlimactic. Like I could have went with something there and yeah. But the, I also heard another quote the other day is like, you can never hear, you can never say the wrong thing to the right person. And you can take that as sappy as you want, or you can take that with even just an athlete or a client. Like the pressure that having faith in some sort of fate, that's, that sounds kind of weird, but having faith in some sort of fate takes away from you in everyday life, I think is unbelievably freeing. The In the Iliad, Iliad, he's talking about driving into battle and basically going to certain death. Uh, talking to his wife, his wife's like, if you like, don't whittle me, uh, my whole family's dead, you're the only thing I have left. And he's like, if it's my time to go, it's my time to go. And then it allows you to do the thing that you're supposed to do that's right in front of you. And same thing with like talking to people, especially with people that have like social anxiety or just are not very good at talking. It's like, you can never really say the wrong thing to the wrong person. Like, I think a certain amount of life is set in th this fate way. Like you are supposed to meet these certain things and you're supposed to meet certain people, have certain events in your life. And I think certain things are brought up into your life as challenges and you have options around those challenges. But when you approach it in a way of just having faith in life that you, as long as you are on the right path and you're, you're making the decisions to be on the right path. See, you, you have like, obviously like the super deep, we're not gonna get into explaining all that because people have spent l their lives trying to explain free will versus fate. Um, but I, I think there is a cool balance there of just having belief in something bigger you, than yourself and belief that there is a path for you to follow while having the free will to choose that path and go on that path. Um, but I think fate gives a lot of freedom throughout your life it's like that just wasn't the right person that just wasn't the right battle that just wasn't or is my time to go or is my time to fail or is my time to leave and in every single one of those situations as long as you can say I was a good person I did the right things at those times 
and it was just my fate to die in that battle. It was just my fate to not have that work out. It was just my fate to get fired from that job, whatever it is. When, when you are doing it that way, it, it frees you up to continue to be a good person. Because the only thing that matters free choice wise is, are you picking to be a good person? And are you fulfilling your abilities, fulfilling your duty as a human? Like, are you doing those two things? Okay, that's your, your, that's your free choice. If not, you're never gonna be on this fate path. But if you are, then you just can have faith that I'm a good person. I'm not, not that you're a good person. That sounds kind of weird, like uh, egotistical, but like I'm making a valiant effort to be a good person and share my talents in the best of ways. I'm not actively being an evil person. That doesn't mean I'm not an asshole. It doesn't mean I don't have bad days. It doesn't mean any of that. I'm not trying to sound like a fucking uh, guru out there in that sense, but am I making an active effort to be a good person? And am I fulfilling my duties as a human being every single day? And if you're doing those two things, the rest of life kind of just works its way out regardless of the floods that come through regardless of the bad things and the struggles that you face i think it gives you a sense of relief of i'm doing these two things right everything else is fate and i just need to follow the path of fate and it's going to lead somewhere and it always does as long as you're following these two things not once in my life have and i've had some messed up situations happen to me in life i've had some bad things happen to me in life but as long as I was following those two things, it's like that bad thing was meant for something. There, there, there was a story behind it. And maybe you can say you justified that story post hoc, whatever it is. But again, that goes to the metaphorical truth that we talked about in one of the earlier daily thoughts is whether it's true scientifically or not, living your life in a way of having these two different ways of you have the free choice to be a good person and you're making that path and there is a pathway for you. Having that metaphorical truth there, living your life in that sense leads to a much better life than being nihilistic or saying there is no good or there is no reason for making a decision. Um, and yeah, I just, I just find a lot of relief in those words, uh, when I read them and, uh, it simplifies life. And, and the more that I go on in life, the more I emphasize trying to simplify my life because there's so many options just thrown at you, especially in our age information and especially the more successful you get and the more, more options present themselves and the more you are following the path, the more there's just so much shit surrounding you at all moments. And it's just like, be a good person, do your duty, share your talents, and then everything else will take care of itself regardless of if it's good or bad. And it'll of course correct as long as you're doing these three, these couple things on this side, the, the free will side of things enough. So that's kind of the message for today. I'm gonna go read the rest, not the rest of the Iliad. I'm not gonna do that. I'm like only 200 pages in, but I'm gonna go read some Iliad. I'm gonna go journal. Maybe we talk about journaling tomorrow and, and the benefits of journaling that it's had for me. And uh, yeah, we'll see you tomorrow. We uh, Tomorrow we got some legs. We got some sprints with the crew in the morning. Um, some legs. We got some drop catch reverse lunges. Some cool jumpy jumps. And we'll, uh, we'll get a post out there and everything like that. No podcast tomorrow. So tomorrow's a pretty chill day. But yeah, looking forward to it. See you guys tomorrow. Boom.